Hello once again. Uh, welcome to the part four of our timing structures. In this discussion, I'll focus on fault bend fold and fault propagation folds. Fault planes do come in different uh, geometries. So depending on the degree of coverage of the fault plane, um, the strata on the hanging wall could actually be flat, or in other words, horizontal, or it could actually be curved. Here we see some direct correlation between the degree of coverage of the fault plane and the strata on the hanging wall. So in the first case, where we have very uh, planar uh, fault planes, like we see here, we actually see that what we have on the hanging wall is actually also planar. Uh, but if you look at the other cases where the, the fault plane becomes increasingly curved, uh, we actually see similar uh, you know, increased curvature on the geometry of the hanging wall strata. Let's consider the first case of a fault bend fold. Now, I like to focus on the word fault bend. You know, some authors would like to call it fault plane fold. Um, the idea here is a fold sitting on a curved fault plane, or rather, a bent fault plane. So, any fold you have on top of a curved or bent fault plane, uh, in this context, is called a fault bend fold. Now, before I go further, I'd like you to take note of the different stratigraphy sections A, uh, B, and C, and note the changes in their thicknesses as you go from the hanging wall on your left to the foot wall on your right. So if you look across uh, fault one, the, like I said about the thicknesses, the first thing to observe is that unit A does not show any change in its thickness across the fault. Uh, on the other hand, units B and C actually show uh, marked increase in its thickness uh, as you move from the foot wall to the hanging wall. Now the next question is what's driving these thickness changes? On closer look, you actually see that um, um, unit B may have increased in thickness as a result of growth during the deposition of that interval. Uh, on the other hand, for unit C, you can actually argue that this unit has actually increased. You see you know, increase on both flanks of this, you know, gentle uh, rollover structure on the fault plane. That's kind of signifying that the increase we see on unit C uh, might be tied to the uh, change in the curvature of this uh, hanging wall uh, units. So although across the fault we still see increase in the thickness of unit C, uh, but from the uh, you know marked increase on both sides, you actually see what goes from you know very thin uh, thickness at the crestal parts uh, of this structure. But as you go away to the flanks of the same structure, you note that just you see alone shows very significant increase in its thickness on both sides of the structure. That's giving us a hint that this uh, interval was actually responding to the curvature. Right, or the gentle rolling of the hanging wall structure. Yeah, in other words, um, the interval A is actually pre-kinematic. That means it was deposited before the whole faulting process actually happened. That means it predates the whole deformation in this area. Uh, the unit B or interval B, uh, the increase we see in its thickness across fault Y is actually due to seeing depositional faulting. That means the faulting happened at the same time that the interval was being deposited. So the, the gentle, originally gentle roll we see actually shows some increase in thickness towards the fault plane um, for that interval B. Uh, but on the on a closer look at C, like uh, we have discussed, uh, the increase in its thickness on both sides, on both, on both flank of the uh, gentle anticlinal structure is actually driven by the geometry of this anticline that we see. That means the deposition of the interval C actually happened at the same time that the anticlinal structure was actually you know, increasing its curvature. And that is actually shown uh, because it's the only unit that shows thickening on both sides of the, um, on, of the structure, uh, unlike the other units A and B. So if I'm to put some time into this um, fault bend folded structure, uh, one will say that it is happened, happened during the deposition of interval C. If that interval C is Messinian, for example, uh, 
uh, that means or to reunion, whatever age that uh, interval is, that is when this fault bend folded structure was formed. All right, so this is a case of a fault propagation fold. Now, some other authors will call it fault tip fold. In other words, you have a, f a folded structure that actually extends all the way to the tip of a particular fault. So you actually have like a stratigraphic unit one and two in this case, uh, going from what you have on the on the hanging wall to your left, you know, being vertically, you know, you know, propagated, and then bending all the way backwards and ending at the tip of the particular fault. So on a closer look, you actually uh, notice that the unit one on both sides of the fault has maintained its thickness. Uh, it kind of appears largely as opaque us from what we see here. On the other hand, units two show um, remarked uh, very significant thinning as you go up the structure on the hanging wall, uh, for example. Uh, but on the foot wall that's underneath the, the, the red uh, fault, we, act, we also see that it goes from very thin, uh, for, from thin, uh, small thickness with some, you know, little indication of increase. Um, for unit three, you see very marked, uh, actually decrease in, in its thickness. It actually wedges out before you get to the crest of the structure. Uh, but on the other side of the structure, uh, the reverse is the case. And uh, finally, for unit four, we see that it's preserved, for the most cases, the thickness has been preserved all the way across from the left, uh, across the crest of the structure, all the way to the right. Now, this tells us a lot about uh, what stratigraphic unit is responding to what? Because at the end of the day, the thicknesses we see, they all have some direct connection with the degree of deformation that uh, you know is happening at the time that interval was being deposited. So I'm going to just you know uh, look through in terms of sequence of what happened between stages one, two, three, and four, and see how that will help us figure out when this uh, fault uh, propagation fold was formed. So following our observation, um, we see that for unit one, um, the thickness has really uh, remained the same on both sides. So if you consider the thickness we see on the foot wall to what we see on the hanging wall, um, largely we've not seen a lot of change in this very case. Um, on the other hand, for unit two, we see that if you go from the you know one flank of this structure that's on the hanging wall all the way to the top of it, you see a reduction, significant decrease in thickness, uh, and that's 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 you know change in thickness is also reflected on the foot wall. So that tells us that, for example, the interval one was actually originally uh, in place before the whole of you know this area of this uh, unit was deformed and that's the reason why you see that the thickness has been maintained across on both sides of the fault. On the other hand, uh, interval 2 or unit 2 which shows a decrease in its thickness is actually implying that that unit was active at the same time that you know uh, it was being deposited. So in other words it was deposited when the structure was actually active and that's the reason you see a significant decrease uh, in its thickness as you go towards the crest of the structure. Now, typically, structures or rather sediments, when they're being formed or when they're being deposited in a basin, will try to you know avoid any barrier or any form of um, high or anticline. So, in this very case, we see that the unit two was uh, not entirely missing at the crest, but it's actually preserved. But the only thing we observe again is that it's thinner as you go towards the crest. That tells us that it was already being deposited, but at the same time it was deposited was when you had some kind of, you know, compression, you know, that actually, you know, trusted of the whole of this area um, upwards. So if you, if you also, in the same uh, vein, consider interval three, like I uh, earlier mentioned, deposits when they're being, you know, feed into a basin will naturally avoid any available structure. So if I have a system you know, of deposits coming in this way and I have an anticline this way, they're naturally going to go around it, right? Uh, that is left or to the right. Uh, 
and then continue on their pathway. So in this very case, because we see that Unit 3 is actually missing at the crest, that means that Unit 3 was actually deposited after this structure had been formed. Um, for Unit 4, it just tells us that, you know, because we see the thickness is preserved all the way across from left to right, tells us that the whole um, area has been healed of the whole, you know, you know, deformation. And that's the reason you actually see that thickness is preserved as you go from, you know, the left to the right of the structure. In summary, um, the interval one will actually represent the pre-kinematic phase as it predates the whole deformational process in this area based on the thicknesses we've seen. Interval two is actually the onset of deformation or rather of thrusting in this area. And if you go by the same judgment, interval three will actually be the phase where you had increased, increased deformation and that means the interval was actually um, at the very phase where the rate at which the deformation was happening was at each peak and uh, that is you know evident because we see that the interval was actually missing at the crest of the structure it goes actually attempts to go around and uh, that means the structure is almost fully formed and the stratigraphic unit 3 just finds its way around and it's missing at the crest and uh, finally the interval 4 is just um, a phase where we say the whole um, you know phase of deformation has ended so that will be more of post kinematic because it you know it's it's actually been deposited when the whole trusting and the whole deformation had actually happened so this is one way to look at you know structures generally looking at their thicknesses and then using the straddle thicknesses and growth packages to determine when um, you you think the onset of deformation uh, was in that area so putting it together, I'm uh, trying to relate everything. So um, we, you can have different configurations of anticlinal structures out there in the outcrops or in subsurface or seismic data, depending on the behavior of the underlying uh, mobile substrates. So in the first case um, here, we have um, the, a simple rollover anticline. Uh, in the second case, you have a, a you know, simple fault propagation folding and that's largely because of the bending of the fault plane while in this other third scenario you have a, a fault propagation fold now this like i said these are all driven by a lot of a lot of you know factors which could be you know the fault plane geometry the behavior of the underlying uh, mobile substrates uh, that's right under the on the on the fault right under the faults uh, on the uh, side of the foot wall and it could also be driven by some, you know, local uh, tectonics, which, like in the case of fault propagation folding, that might be uh, space constraints. Even an extensional, in an extensional domain, you can also have this kind of fold, uh, fold which in, the, in those cases are not driven by active, you know, plate movement or active uh, compression in, in the area, but just maybe because of some kind of local barriers that will lead to, you know, you know, bulking or, you know, trusting uh, uplift of, of strata, especially on the hanging wall of structures. Um, fault provision folds sometimes, or in most cases, are indicated of some kind of active uh, compression. However, in the Niger Delta, uh, we have very uh, clear evidences of fault provision folding that are not uh, driven by, you know, active compression, but as a result of barriers or some uh, local uh, buckles which eventually get amplified. Uh, through time. So now this is just um, one way of looking at you know folds. Uh, like I earlier mentioned in the previous slides, the key thing is to look at the you know the stratigraphic units and their thicknesses, and use that to judge what happened and when that happened, uh, and that way you're able to make some you know case for when the structure uh, the fold bend fold or the fold progression fold was formed. So thank you very much for your time. Um, do, do, do not hesitate to, you know, shoot me an email if you have questions or ideas. I'll be glad to respond. Thank you very much.